Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Liquid Brain. So today I want to show you how you can do your own blockchain system in R. So just a disclaimer, this is not a full-fledged blockchain or cryptocurrency, but rather it's a very simple, minimal blockchain system that helps you to understand the concept of blockchain rather than actually deploy it yourself. If you really need a blockchain system, you can actually download one off the internet and just substitute your own. This is more on an education on how it's supposed to work. Okay, so what is a blockchain? So blockchain is a secure transaction record system. Is that when you have a list of transactions, how can you make sure that every single one is recorded properly? So how blockchain achieve that is through actually called a hash function. So, so a hash function generates a very unique code for every details that you code in. I'll come back to this in a while. But what it does is that for every single transaction, they'll include a little bit details from the previous block, which is why it's called block and you chain them together. That's why it's called blockchain. So what, what essentially means is that if you change the, the details in the first block, it will affect the second block and you affect the third block, fourth block, sixth block, blah, 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 and so on. So every time you want to change the information in the middle of the chain, it will affect every single thing in, in, in the rest of the chain. Okay, so you can also detect the, the, you can detect the error by just checking the hash code. So before we go too much into it, what is a hash function? So one of the hash algorithm or hash function I'm using here is called SHA-256. So what hash function do is that you take um, a fix, not fix, you take any amount of string. So any text, it can be a paragraph, it can be a word, it can be three words, five words, it can be a book. But if you fit uh, the, this text into this hash function, you produce a fixed number of output and it's supposed to be unique, okay? There, there are not, there's some bad algorithm that doesn't actually produce the good one. But SHA-256 is one of the really good, uh, what is that called? Um, hash function, yeah. That, that actually create a very unique code for everything that you put in. You also have something called the avalanche effect. So let's say this is the two example of the hash function. You have hello, where you fit into hash SHA-256. You have this long string. And then if you add just one information in the back, it completely changes the whole code, okay? So 158F and 948B. So basically every single thing changed. So the same thing will happen if you change, let's say, E to a tree or L to I and so on and so forth. So you can't edit any single part of the string without affecting like the whole thing. So yeah. So the, the best thing about this hash function is that it's always produced a fixed uh, length of output. So no, no matter how long of a string that you try to slot into this thing, you always produce 256 letters. So 256 uh, alphanumeric, basically. Okay, so you can calculate the number of power. So it's very rare that you fit it two different things and you will actually come up the same thing. And that's called a hash collision. Very rare in SHA-256 and which is actually why Bitcoin uses SHA-256 as their main hashing function. Okay, so come with come back to the block system. So how does um, a hashing function help blockchain to have a secure transaction details and records? So if you have a normal data structure, so this is, let's say you're done in like VSAS or, or basically any kind of data database that's stored in something like that. Row one is James, rows to May and top cat and, and so on and so forth. So what I do is that I can just change something in the row two and you won't be able to detect it down the road. So this is maybe not that important for names, but when you're a banking system and you're trying to keep track of a record of transaction of people owing you or you owing people money, uh, every single bit of information is very important because you know, you some people might own one million and pay back one and if you just change one zero it's actually ninety thousand uh one million is nine hundred thousand dollars difference on on the overall value so this is very very important uh where the details is correct so how does a blockchain allow for this kind of security is that every single detail will be attached or every single transaction here will be attached with a hash function so this is a hash function produced by feeding James into the SHA-256. And the second block here actually produce a hash function from the, the details of the second transaction plus the hash of the first transaction. And there's different um, 
um, blockchain that does it differently. But what essentially it needs to have is the details. So the hashing function for block two have to incorporate every detail from block two plus the detail from block one so that you, you mix one of the one above into the block two, which is why if you change anything here, it will actually change the hand function completely and then you change this changes the hash function here completely as well. And, and when row two changes, which is block two changes, block two changes, block four changes, and so on. So every single thing in the, in the back is different. So you're unable to change it without people knowing it. That, that's basically what it, it is. So in, in many cryptocurrencies, such as like Bitcoin or Ethereum and many other things, um, they're a lot bigger than what a blockchain system basically is. So a blockchain system is just the core system of how data is being recorded. In many cryptocurrency, it actually have a proof of work or proof of stake system so that only a certain people are allowed to add the block. So it might be, uh, yeah, it's a basically a trust system that I'm not going to explain here. So adding of the block is very difficult and very needs to be very controlled very carefully. And uh, the cryptocurrency will also allow something called a decentralization and how do you synchronize all the database from everyone else? Because what basically it happened in, block, uh, in cryptocurrency is that every single person will have a copy of this long list that you can check. So if anyone produced the wrong one, you can actually emit wrong hashes, for example. You immediately know that mm, what, what's wrong with your thing. And in most of the cryptocurrency that I know, they use this like uh, a majority system. So if majority have this information, it's usually correct. And if you have something different, you're the minority and you know they will usually just ignore you and take the majority answer. Okay, so cryptocurrency will also need much more interconnects, how it actually apply, how, how do you actually know the transaction? You can't get transaction on a piece of paper and all that thing. While, to, while blockchain itself is just a record system, it doesn't care that much. Okay, so this is not a cryptocurrency tutorial. This is just a blockchain. Okay, so in cryptocurrency, you might also need to name it after dot brick so that like Shiba Inu and Dogecoin, so you can actually get a better value for um, your cryptocurrency once you have released them. Okay, so now let's go to R and actually see the code. So the code I have is very simple. It's only like fifty six different um, different what they call different line. So let me close the others and let me make it a little bit bigger so you all can see. Okay, so what I do is that I basically use an S4, S4 object as individual blocks and I just chain all the S4 object into a list, basically. So the only library that you need to use is the OpenSSL. So this library is actually used to, to do the SHA-256 function. So the first thing I do is to set class. So this is create a kind of structure for our transaction or block system so that every block will have a timestamp, which is the time of the when the block is created. It has an account from and an account to. So if you're doing something like a money transfer, you you need a to and from all the time. And you have a transaction amount, so how many uh, thing that you transfer, how many coin, how many money that you transfer, for example. We also need a block number, so we know which one is it down the line, like we said about it just now. So we can always know the previous block. And we also need the hash number, so that will be the, the output from our hash function. So this set the class for the S4 object, but in order to actually create a new object, you use the new function. A new function will just tell that uh, what kind of object is this. So the object here, object name, sorry, not, yeah, the, the class name I'll say is link, okay? So this is the link of to create a transaction and we'll have a time. So this will create the first block in our chain, okay? Which is why I call it S1. So the timestamp is the current system time. So this will change based on who you are, where you're from and what time you're running the code. And account from, I will just randomly generate a five digit number. For example, an account to another random five digit number, the transaction amount is 0 0.225. So meaning that this person is transferred 0 0.225 of something uh, to the other person account. And this is the block number one. And last one is the hash number. So for hash number, remember when output from char256 is actually a hash, a data type. So you just need to convert the hash data type into a character. 
So it's a lot easier to, to understand and store later because when you do a hash function, you need to add to another hash function, so and so forth. It's a little bit confusing over there. Okay, so just for simplicity's sake, we're going to repeat the same exercise for a second block. And you can see that the first hash is not that important because they're the first in the chain. And if you change the first thing in the chain, everything will change anyway. So the first hash is not fundamentally very important. And let's move on to our second second block in the chain. Okay, so same thing. The timestamp will be system time and we have another two random five digit number and a random amount for that transaction to happen. And we have block number two and we have the hash function. Okay, so uh, there's something I, I did a, a kind of a shortcut here. So in this case, the hash number should be a, a joint character of the time account account transaction block number plus the hash number from the first block. Okay, so you have essentially this whole thing joined together and then joined again by the hash number of the first block to create this hash function. You know, but I'm, I'm kind of lazy, so I'll show you how to do that in the function later. Okay, so this will create our second block. So let, let's just try now. So set class, create one, create two. So this is our first block. As you can see, all the information are here. And you have the hash number here. And this is our second object. We have the, all the random number that we have. And we have a hash function, sorry, hash output here as well. Okay, so now is that we chain S1 and S2 together into... Uh, a new object called actual chain. So the chain is the actual table of all the different information, which is why in chain you can see this is block one, information, block two, information again. Okay, now let's, now it's come to the complicated side where I can't create individually all of them and it's kind of complicated. So what I do is that I write, I write actually a function here. So what does this uh, create transaction function do is that it will um, help me to create the rest of the chain so that I don't have to input so many information. So first thing is that in uh, writing a function, there is a way to input default value so that in certain way, I know I don't have to do, let's say, the timestamp of a system time in the future. Every time I need to add a transaction, it will automatically add the current system time every time I run this function. Okay, so account from two and transaction, I'll put it equals to zero so that if the user doesn't input anything specifically, it will not speed out an error, but it will just give me an empty block where there's nothing inside. Okay, so it will also not mess up the chain and so on. Okay, so that's a default value. So the chain will equals to the chain, which is the object that we created just now, just to make things a little bit easier to understand. Okay, actually it should be capital. Okay, so so what inside this function is, first thing is to, is to take the hash, hash number from the previous block. So what this do is that it takes the chain number. So let's say what is the current chain. So I'm, let's say I'm adding the third block. I will actually have to calculate the length of the chain. So I'm, cal I'm calculating the third block now means there's two blocks already in the chain. So this will output a two. So it will be chain the second object and get the hash number. And this will be the hash number from the previous block. Okay, so I call it previous hash. So the block number will be the current block number that I'm creating, which is why I use the same thing, but I create a block number plus one. So I'm creating the third object now. So this is where the complication come in. It's called a hash number. So the hash number, like I say just now, is actually to join together the current block, timestamp, the account, the transaction value, the block number, and this is most important one, the hash number from the previous block, add all together and run a SHA-256 on it. So you create a unique ID or unique fingerprint for this transaction and its location in the chain. Okay, so once I've done, I've just uh, create a new object called out. So this new function is the same function that I, I use up there to create my uh, block object. So you create an out, which is actually the new object, the new block. And once I get a new block, I just add it to the chain and I return the chain uh, on from this function. So I just create transaction. And lastly, uh, if I want to add another um, object to the chain, I just run the create transaction function. And what I need to supply over here is only the account from, account to, and transaction. 
So of course, you can actually have nothing. So you will just fit in account zero, account form is zero, account two is zero, and transaction is zero. But if you do have some information that you want to put in, uh, you only need to fit in these three information because the rest has been already handled with the, the default value from here to here. Okay, so we can just add one to the chain. Uh, there is something wrong. Promise under evaluation and uh, an earlier problem. Well, hello, I'm back. So apparently you just have to explicitly uh, indicate that the parameters that you're not putting in, even though that is, uh, a, there's already a default parameter assigned. So I'm not too sure why, because it actually tests. Everything works properly when I test this code yesterday. And when a camera is running, it's a bit of camera shine. Okay, so um, so basically the, the chain, the create transaction function will just create a, a new object in a chain. So what I do is that I'll just create a, a sample, which is a random number between one and nine, 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 nine. And the account number two is again, a random number between one to nine, 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 nine. And the transaction is a random number between zero and one. Okay, so you can, if you are curious, you can actually just copy this number out and it will give you a random number between zero and one. And the chain equals to chain and timestamp equals to system time. And you can just run this. So you can see now our chain is on six different block now. And you can actually just add again, add again, add again. And you can see we have more blocks. You are supposed to refresh this. Yep, so we have nine blocks. So every time when you run that function, you will actually create a new transaction and every transaction will have a new hash. And this hash is actually based on whatever you have on the previous block. So that if I want to go in and do a chain uh, number five, and if I want to change something from the account from, uh, I wouldn't be able to because this will result in the change in the hash function output uh, to affect throughout the thing. So people, if they come in and actually check on all this value, they should be able to know where the error is. Is it a number five block or number six block? Okay, so uh, you can find this code in GitHub and feel free to use it on whatever purpose that you want to, want to do it from. I'm not sure what you can use it for. And that's basically the, the, the really basic idea of blockchain, which is create a chain so that all the transaction can be recorded securely and if and if anyone want to check if there's any error or someone have manipulated some previous data set it's very easy to look at the the hash function and realize where's the error do understand that sometimes it's not a human deliberately go in and change the value it could be a cosmic ray or it could just be a computational errors that actually result in the errors in the earlier of the code Okay, so that, that's it for now. I, learned, I hope you know a little bit about blockchain more today after the video and we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.